Hello, people of YouTube. My name is Steve Gray. This is Gray's Guitars, and thank you for watching. Today, we are going to be talking about a Guitar Center exclusive, uh, the Epiphone Traditional Pro ES335 model. Uh, they are going for $549 US, and they are coming in a variety of nifty colors that you don't typically see an ES335 in every day. So we have wine red, ebony, uh, inverse green, and gold. My two favorites of this probably are the inverse green and the gold color. Uh, so gear retailers, guitar centers teamed up with Epiphone for an all new traditional pro ES335, which arrives in a slew of vintage and contemporary colorways with an uber affordable 549 price tag. I don't know about you, to me, 549 I mean, that's that's a good mid-range guitar. I don't know if I would call that affordable, uh, depending on how much money you make, uh, what your definition of affordable is. I, I wouldn't say, that's not, I wouldn't, it's not uber affordable. It's affordable, I wouldn't call it uber affordable. Do not be fooled by the modest listing price. The two guitar titans have pulled out all the stops to supercharge the sub $600 offering with a number of impressive appointments that aim to stay true to the model's historic roots, as well as boasting gorgeous, like for like aesthetic desi design, the traditional pro electric guitar boasts a five ply maple body, which houses a solid maple center block charged with adding pristine residence while also eliminating feedback. The 24.7, I think that's a mistake. It should be 24 and three quarter scale. Mahogany neck is also on the spec sheet, sculpted to provide a round C profile, slightly chunkier profile compared to the original design of the 50s era's ES-335. The faster neck feel is paired with an equally slick Indian laurel fretboard. No more rosewood. You're probably not really going to see rosewood anymore on, Ep on Epiphone models, which comes equipped with 22 frets and contemporary dot inlays. The headstock boasting the new open book, which a lot of people like. Uh, Blueprint aims to establish its own Epiphone identity while also playing homage to the instantly recognizable Gibson design. Several routine specs expected from the standard 335 model also make the cut, including a stop bar tailpiece paired with an updated lock tone system. Control layout comprised from three-way switches, two volumes, two tone knobs, you know, nothing fancy. Orthodox Circus is awarded with a pair of Onico Classic Pro Humbuckers, which feature an output of Onico 5 magnets and matched with a number of windings said to be sustainable for clear heights, tight lows, and plenty of bite. In an effort to give the guitar a more modern twist, Guitar Center and Epiphone have loaded the traditional pros with coil splitting capabilities engaged via a pair of push-pull knobs. Like that is kind of nice to have, because then you can get that single coil sound if that's what you're looking for. For finishing touches, there's even everything you'd expect from a vintage-inspired Epiphone ES model, namely a three-ply pickguard, cream body binding, and Epiphone Deluxe tuners. Available in classic wine red, ebony finishes, as well as contemporary inverse green and gold colorways, the Guitar Center exclusive Epiphone Traditional Pro ES335 is available for pre-order now. So you can't actually get it right now. Uh, it is just currently a pre-order, but let's take a look at some bigger images of these. Uh, the wine red, the black, yeah, I mean, they're nice, but um, if you're looking for something where it's probably going to hold value in the foreseeable future... Uh, that, is that a Gibson bridge on it? No, it's not. It's the standard metric bridge. But if you're looking for something that holds its value and is going to hold its value, uh, I would recommend probably picking up either the green or the gold. They may even end up going for a more expensive premium at some point in time. Uh, I do wish on this black model specifically, uh, you know, I don't like seeing black guitars. A lot of black guitars you see with, you know, the rosewood fretboard, unless it's really dark, I just do not like it. Uh, I definitely prefer an ebony fretboard, darker fretboard on a black guitar or very dark colored guitar. I mean, just th this, I think the surf green even would look pretty good with an ebony fretboard. Oh yeah, surf green, inverse blue, green, whatever they're calling this color. What are they calling this color? Inverse green. There we go. 
And you know, it's, it's the copy, the Gibson copy of the Gibson Deluxe tuners. If you don't like those, you might want to change those out. Uh, this one, aesthetically, this one is probably my favorite because I've always wanted a gold top or just a gold guitar. I've never owned one yet. Looks like we got all the stickers here on the back of it. Actually, it's kind of weird. That doesn't show the stickers, but if we go here, I can't zoom in. It shows stickers. That's kind of interesting. But uh, push-pull knobs, you know, nothing fancy. Let's go ahead, and I already kind of read the specs but let's read them again. So five ply maple body. So it, it's your typical sandwich of the ES-335 body. You know, you got a mahogany neck with a round C profile and you know, a little fretboard. They said it was thicker than the traditional ES-35s in the 50s. So I'm guessing that probably means similar to a 59 style. Though, I mean, don't quote me on that 100%, but I'm guessing that if it's going to be a little bit of a fatter neck, it's not going to be your 60 slim neck. So if you're looking for that, this probably is not going to be the guitar for you. Uh, you got the dual Nico Classic Pro humbuckers, coil split, three-way switch, locking to pneumatic bridge. Yeah, you know, everybody knows what a two pneumatic bridge is by now. At least I hope you do. Uh, you know, semi-hollow construction, mahogany neck, high output humbuckers. The is loaded with a pair of Nico Classic Pros. Nico 5 mags provide more output making this ES-335 fit more into the modern context. Each coil of the pickup has a matching number of winds, producing a more focused sound with clear highs, tight lows, and plenty of bite. Push-pull knobs split the humbuckers for single-coil sounds. You know, every, everybody says, I feel like with a lot of guitars, like, oh, this is the best pickup ever. Oh, this is the best pickup ever. You know, put out the readings. You know, get, get the multimeter out, put out the readings. That way people can compare and contrast and see what they actually want. And they're calling it fail-safe hardware. Not sure why they're calling that, but let's read this little bit of it. The Ebiphone ES335 Traditional Pro updates the traditional tunematic bridge with a stop bar tailpiece with its lock tone system. This prevents both from falling off during string changes while maintaining a period correct look. Deluxe tuners keep up the vintage vibe. Other specs include single ply binding in a fretboard binding, graph tech nut, and top hat knobs. Graph tech nut is always nice. Uh, this should hopefully also have CTS pots, and I believe uh, Ebiphone was upgrading everything to CTS pots, to my knowledge, as of 2020. A uh, hard shell case or EpiLite gig bag is available separately. Of course, they, God forbid, they throw in a freaking gig bag or a hard shell case. But I understand the price of lumber is pretty bad right now. Uh, so if you want a hard shell case, expect another probably $80 to $100 on top of that price. Uh, gig bag probably looking more in the $30 to $50 range. Uh, protect your guitar. If you're buying a brand new guitar, you can save up a couple extra bucks, buy a case for the thing. Uh, so we have maple top and body, mahogany neck, Indian laurel fingerboard. This is kind of just repeating this stuff over and over again. Uh, here's the specs. This is really weird how they did that. I'm guessing this is just the standard 24 and 3 quarters inch scale length. Because this should be like 24.75. That would make sense. 24.7, that's like a like a hair. Is that a hair longer or a hair shorter? Who knows? Uh, truss rod is just standard truss rod. Uh, neck. Humbucker, humbucker, control layout. They don't really tell you. So there's no, there's no guarantee these are actually CTS pots in, these, in this guitar, but I'm pretty confident it is. Uh, so if you're not familiar with their, you know, their fancy, they call it a fail-safe hardware. I actually like Ebiphone's bridge better. Uh, so while you can't see it, there's little pieces of metal on the studs inside each piece. So when you, exact, basically exactly as they describe it, when you take off the strings, this will stay fixed. So if you really want to get it off, you can. I think you have to have a screwdriver, if I remember correctly. Um, and they've been doing this for a long time. I have a two, my 2006 Ebiphone, while the tailpiece up front isn't locking, because I believe the actual... So the tailpiece, rather, bridge, mixing that up. Uh, so the bridge itself on my 2006 has that locking feature. They've been doing it for a long time. Um, the bridge piece, you know, where you intonate the guitar up here, uh, this, yeah, that's that's more recent. But 9 out of 10 when you're changing strings, this doesn't really move anyway, but the locking feature uh, is pretty nice to have. So let me know what you think of these bad boys. They are up available for pre-order. Let's see, before we go, let's see if I can give you, oh, I'm knocking around my uh, 
microphone here. Let's see if I can find you possibly a tone demo. ES335, Epiphone. Can it compete with a Gibson? Eh, I don't know. Maybe we'll skip. Let's let's do a quick quick tone demo. Quick tone demo. Let's see. Does he play? History. Soundbite. There we go. The styling. But if you've used a Gibson Pro Bucker before, you know what it sounds like. Or Gibson El Nico. Yeah, Pro, pro pickups. You know what it sounds like. They're decent sounding pickups. Uh, not in my opinion. I do like most Gibson pickups better than Epiphone, but they're getting there. They're getting pretty close. And I used to really hate Epiphone pickups, but now I it's to the point where if I bought this guitar new, I probably would just leave it alone, um, unless I got bored of it or something or wanted to change it up. Because changing electronics in a three thirty five is not particularly fun. For those of you that have done it before, you gotta like wire in everything here. You gotta fish everything through. It's a giant uh, mess. But we'll leave it at that. This has been Gray's Guitars. My name is Steve Gray. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell, leave a like. Feel free to comment down below what you would like me to do for future guitar and music related content. Thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one.